It's my time. It's your time. To shine. It is products. Okay. Wait, I thought we had a song. We do, but we can't hear it. But oh. everybody out there can hear it. Okay. And then they hear us going do 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 do. <laughs> okay. What do you want? I don't know. I don't know what to do. What All do you right. want? Let's do these new products. Okay. In the store, Intel, Galileo, designed in Ireland, Arduino certified. You know you like want a beast. one. Yeah, I think we're the only people that have them in stock right now. And uh, you can get them right now. And you can get them at 10% off too, which is uh, not a, good deal. a great deal for us, but a great deal for you. Good deal for you. So Lady Ada, what is a Galileo? Um, so this is, yeah, this is the box. So the, the Galileo is an Intel project where they're showing off um, how you can use their Intel processors um, sort of like as embedded controllers. A lot of people, when they think of embedded microcontroller or microprocessor, not microcontroller, microcontrollers you'd think of like little STMs or PICs or ABRs. For microprocessors, a lot of people think about ARM, ARM Core, and uh, ARM and Intel are not really good friends. And so Intel's like, well, I can do something like that too. So they're showing off, um, you know, what they can do with their processor. Actually, I don't remember the name of the processor in the Galileo. I know it's like an x86 type thing. But, um, you know, they basically took this processor and they added uh, Arduino headers and they have, you know, sort of a um, some glue software that lets you kind of write Arduino-like code on it. Um, Arduino certified it, but um, not all shields are going to work because it goes through um, an I squared C converter. And it, it's really powerful. It's got Ethernet. You can plug in uh, PCI cards. Or you get PCI Wi-Fi cards. Um, comes with power adapters. What else comes with it? Has Ethernet on board, um, USB, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. And and you know, it, it's basically an extremely powerful microcomputer. Um, I think it's much more powerful than the Raspberry Pi. Even do you, know, do you remember what the specs are? It's funny, there's no specs well, on the box. Um, you know, it's basically like a 486, but <laughs> I feel bad. I didn't, I didn't research this because we didn't have any. This yeah, is we like have all the specs got, on our side. We got like two yesterday. Yeah. Um, we'll check we have it a lot out. right now, and they're going to go really fast. So if you want to get them, you probably get one right so now. So people are starting to do projects with them, um, mostly you know. Uh, uh, it's like 400 megahertz atom or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. It's probably the atom processor. Um, but you can do, you know, projects where you have like sensor data in and out and it connects to Wi-Fi or, or the internet. So I'm seeing yeah. projects like that. So projects are slowly coming out. It's still really new. Uh, a lot of people don't have them. They give away like 50,000 of them to schools. So we'll be seeing more projects in the future. So this is another addition yeah. to, you know, the Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone Black, um, and yeah. similar I, PAL. I like the tray coming up. I think that one's going to be interesting. Yeah. Anyways. So next up. We have Intel. If you're an Intel fan, if you don't like AMD. Get this. We have cables. Cable. This is a Display Port to cable and cable. Display Port Mini cable. Uh, it's just a kind of basic Display Port cable. We are carrying this as an accessory for our Display Port Mini monitor, uh, which is not quite ready yet, but will be soon. Stop, so we have yeah, stop back. We're gonna have an awesome Retina Display monitor Can't that you can it. make yourself. Qualia. Yeah. It, We're still thinking of the name. We're not sure exactly. We have some names. We have some naming ideas. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little mini monitor that uses uh, the same screen that's used in the iPad 3 and iPad 4, which is, a, which is called a retina screen. Um, but it's, it's just the LG screen that's extremely high resolution. And it uses uh, display ports. So we have a cable, 10 okay. foot long display port cable. That's what it's for. Okay. That's why. If you're wondering, like, hey, what can I do with this? It's Next for up. something that doesn't exist yet. It's, uh, it's this thing. This is a headphone <laughs> jack. It's a stereo headphone jack that is breadboard friendly. Um, and we actually have been using this particular jack in a bunch of our kits and projects. We have it in the uh, Brain Machine kit, in the Wave Shield kit. Yeah. And now we have it as sort of a standalone item. Um, wait, and then hold on, I'm not ready yet. Okay. Uh, can you show, uh, sorry, that, that, yeah. So you can see, you, you can stick a 3.5 millimeter um, stereo plug into it and then there's five pins and they're basically spaced 0.1 inches apart so you can plug it into a breadboard and have audio video whatever you want uh, it has five pins because there's a switch on the left and right channel people who don't need to have a switched input uh, just connect those or, or don't connect the middle inner pins and yeah. then uh, next up is a pigtail show. oh you wanted to show yeah this. I'm gonna show this so this okay. is a three-point. Oh, can you hide me? Yeah, go over, go over there. 
No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, there you go. So this is a 3.5 millimeter uh, pigtail cable, and it's a 3.5 millimeter right angle connector on stereo on one side, and then it comes out to wires, black ground, I think white is left and red is right channel. Um, and we carry this because it's as handy for when you want to connect something to audio, input or output, um, and you don't want to solder, cut and, and strip the wires. The reason is that most headphone cables, um, they don't have uh, easy to solder to wires. The wires are really, really thin and they, they kind of dissolve actually. And so these are really nice tinned wires. Um, they're really good. You can plug them into a breadboard. You can solder to them without having to worry about them dissolving. Okay. And these two go together. You, know, you can plug. Yeah, you got the that one. The pigtail into the jack, and then I understand now. There's you a You wanted to show that one, then you can show this one because you're like, look, uh -huh. look, we got this thing, and it's looking over here, and it's like, hey, you, and it's like, Plug hey, in. let's hang out. Okay. All right. Thank you. A little bit of a detour there for me. I know there was a, there was a lot going. Well, because these two products are similar, but I wanted to show them together. Okay. Um, next up, I'm gonna um, okay get to our, some of our stuff that we that just found. Our our our, our part time Ada fruit. Originals. Okay, this is an Adafruit original. This is the TPA <laughs> 2016. Uh, the D2 stands for digital stereo, uh, two channel. This is a Class D amplifier, and we have a couple Class D amps in the store already, but this one's very interesting because this one has I squared C volume control, and it's an automatic gain control amplifier. Um, so you, most of the other amps we have, you know, there's no way to digitally control it, you know, like setting the volume or left or right channel. Um, you basically have to use a potentiometer externally. So this is an amplifier that's meant to be controlled by a microcontroller, and it's I squared C. It's very easy to use, and it's got you know it's basically standard I squared C. So you can use this amplifier. It's a two, up to 2.8 watt stereo amp, and you can control the volume and gain parameters over I squared C. You can control it with an Arduino, for example. Um, so I have a demo for this. We're gonna do a live demo. Are you ready? <laughs> no. Not at all. No? I'm, not, I'm okay. not ready. I'm not ready for live demo. Okay. I don't think anybody's ready for I'm live. I'm not ready for live demo, but I'm gonna try it anyway. No one's ready for live demo. Okay, we're um, gonna do this. So here is my um, Arduino, and I've connected to the um, amplifier here, and then to two speakers, and then I have like a little music playing shield over here that I'm gonna plug in, and uh, I'm actually using the uh, pigtail here to uh, plug it directly into this amplifier. So I'm using the Arduino to control it, but the audio is coming from this MP3 player over here. So then I have Og Vorbis music. Og Vorbis, it plays Og Vorbis? Oh, the MP3, yeah. I, I need to, because you, you're worried about like, a, a copyright violation, like the YouTube stuff. This yeah. is not copyright, this is Creative Commons. Yeah. Um, so right now it's quiet, but I can increase the volume or reduce wow. the volume. The button is read by the Arduino, which then increases or decreases the volume. And um, I turned off the automatic gain control, because it's actually kind of hard to understand automatic gain control um, over like the span of five seconds. I'll turn this down now. The automatic gain control, what that can do is, let's say you have um, spoken word, or you know, uh, like a voice, or, or even some music, and each track is slightly different in volume. Um, you know, one track is so loud that it um, uh, clips the amplifier and it causes like weird distortions. And one is so quiet you can't hear it. What you can do with the automatic gain control is it will, the amplifier will listen to the volume of music or spoken word or whatever over the course of about five to 10 seconds. And it will slowly increase the volume, slowly, slowly, slowly until you get to this nice normalized kind of volume standard that you want. And so all the music in spoken word all sounds about the same. Um, it's, it's useful if you, know, you, you don't necessarily want to be able to have somebody tweaking the volume constantly. You want to try to normalize it as much as possible. So it's a, it, you don't have to use it. It's an extra in this amplifier. It's something that the amplifier can do automatically for you. Uh, but you can turn it off over I squared C. And we have a tutorial as well that shows okay. all this stuff. Good work, you. Um. And look how tiny it is. Look a little tiny. Yeah, it's a little, little amplifier. Tiny. Okay. We also have um, another photo of it. There you go. Okay. On the other <laughs> side. No, we do. I so gotta, yeah, so it's, it's I gotta SC, show I gotta show everything. Yeah, so you can see on the left power, the right and left inputs, and then SCL, SDA, I squared C, VCC. Yeah. So yeah, it can drive eight ohm or four ohm speakers. It's a nice we're gonna have a couple more audio amps because like yeah. these things are so handy all the time and you wanna have okay. loud audio. 
The data, what is this? Next up, we have a 9 DOF. We already had a 10 DOF. There's a 10 degree of freedom board. And uh, some people don't actually need a barometric uh, pressure sensor, like altitude sensor, temperature sensor. They're actually, they just want motion sensing. So this has 9 degrees of freedom. Um, it has, on the left there is a gyro, and the gyro can do up to 2,000 degrees per second, um, from 250 degrees per second up to 2,000 degrees per second of rotation, um, gyroscope motion control. And then on the right, you can see there's another chip, and that's an LSM-303, and that can do triple access acceleration from, I think, plus or minus 2G up to plus or minus 16G, and also... Um, Compass, magnetometer, which basically is you know which way is north, which way is yeah. south. You can you can also detect you know magnetic uh, magnets and stuff. But for the most part, people want to measure the um, magnetic force of the north and south poles to kind of help you orient yourself. And um, a nine DOF sensor. So the ten DOF sensor is basically this plus a barometric pressure sensor, which does altitude. Um, for a lot of people, if they're doing robots, they don't need to know how high they are off the ground, they just, you know, in, in meters, they need to just basically know motion. Uh, so this is a little bit less expensive because we don't uh, solder on the barometric pressure sensor. Um, and we'll be doing some more projects with these kinds of sensors, for example, an, uh, um, you know, an automatic heading and uh, rotation uh, software example for people who basically want to take all this data and fuse it together into knowing, like, which way is their project oriented, which is good for... Uh, robotics or some spatial sensing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a robot, you have a quadcopter, you have some flying thing, you have a moving thing, you want to have uh, motion analysis or control, this is probably the sensor board you want. Got a nice four mounting hole so you can really plug it in and have it be very secure. Okay. Um, I want you to ask or answer just a couple questions about, the audio, about the audio amp. Yeah, audio and, amp. And then we'll um, we'll continue on. So, Lady Ada. Yes. For the audio amp, what ask. kind of audio amplifier would be ideal for using electric guitar with one of the eight ohm speakers from Adafruit? Is there one? Um, all of the uh, all of the amplifiers that we have in the shop can do. Pardon me. Can do eight ohm speakers. Uh, they can do up to about one point seven watts into an eight ohm speaker. Soon we will have, like in a couple weeks, we will have an amplifier that can do 20 watts, um, or maybe I think 17 watts into an 8 ohm speaker. It's not no. quite ready yet. Uh, so it depends on how big your speaker is. If it's a small speaker about this big, or maybe like a watt or two, the amplifiers in the store will be great. If you have an uh, 8 ohm speaker that's like really big, uh, you might want to wait for our 20 watt amplifier. Okay, and then two other quick questions. Because the yep. Arduino power the amp, and are those fiducials or test points? Uh, we have fiducials on every board, and if you watch the Micah video, you'll even find out Ooh. why. Uh, so go watch that video. Um, and then what was the other question? The, um, uh, can the Arduino power the amp? You can power the amplifier through the, the USB port, but you won't be able to get um, as much power as you might like because a USB port can only provide 5 volts at half an amp, so it's 2.5 watts. And uh, the amplifier can do 2.8 watts into each channel, so it's five and a half watts yeah. total. So not a good idea if you want it to be really loud to have it powered uh, via USB. Uh, for that, I would suggest powering it separately with our uh, five volt two amp um, wall adapter, or you can use battery yeah. pack uh, if you want to get that full five, five and a half watts. Okay, well, two more quick questions, because this is a popular more product. Watts. Yeah, um, can the amp run the bone transducers? Yes, it can. We don't have a specific tutorial for it yet, okay. but a, a bone conduction transducer is basically just an 8 ohm speaker. Like mm -hmm. it, the amplifier sees it as an 8 ohm speaker. So, yeah, when we were testing the bone conduction amp, we used these uh, Class D amplifiers and like we'd use them to press yeah. against our bones. Okay, and then one last thing. Um, someone was curious about why the, the H shape for the design is very, very interesting. This is a, this is a Cape Town joint, uh, and this is, <laughs> this is his Kevin, style. Kevin Towns is our lead engineer. And he does really beautiful designs. He so. does beautiful designs. So the, yeah. the bone shape is, uh, well, first off, we had a couple sensors, and, and you know, there's certain clearances we want to give them. Um, and so that sort of def just defined the size of it. But for something that does uh, motion sensing like this, especially one with a gyroscope, um, you really want to have it be attached strongly to whatever it's, it's measuring, because any vibrations uh, you know, can come loose. Um, it won't be measuring what's moving as, uh, effectively. So we want to have uh, good four mounting points, and I think this is a very handsome shape. You know, you have connections down at the bottom to the breakouts, but you still have uh, four strong points for yeah. uh, connection. H is for handsome. Okay. 
H is for handsome. Next up, we're gonna go through these last ones quick because I want to leave some time for general questions. Yeah, we, we got, got a little bot. We got a little bot. We got Sparky the bot. We got a little robot. Um, Sparky this just came in. I'll Sparky hold this up. So this is actually a really nice little robot Sparky kit. The bot. It um, kids it's like Sparky. Sparky draws Sparky's hand. <laughs> <laughs> you coming up with like a theme song for the Sparky Bot? Sparky can I hold? Can I hold this thing up? Sparky Bot. Okay, Sparky. it's a cute little robot. So it's it's, a, it's not a huge robot, which I kind of like. It's just a little little mini bot. Um, it's got a sonar sensor on a um, rotating servo. It's got an LCD up top. Um, it's got a little battery case back here. You can open. You can replace. Um, uses six AA batteries. It's got two wheels, which I think are actually servos. Um, it's got a little caster at the bottom, ball caster, and uh, sensors for line detection, and then two little grippies. These are nice little grippies for gripping onto things. Nice work. Um, it's an open source hardware project. It is uh, at, at Mega uh, 32U4, so it's uh, Arduino IDE compatible. Um, I just think it's a, a cute little robot. It's got a lot of extras. Yeah. It's got a compass accelerometer, RGB LED, uh, beeper. Uh, I know some of the, switch, ex the expansion port. The robot learning and robot competition and robot robot education stuff use this bot. That's why we got it. It's a nice bot, by the way. Yeah, it, I actually just kind of like it. Also, I like that it has the gripper built in. A lot of robots don't do that. Like I'm, I'm slowly opening and closing yeah. this robot. It comes with a little Bluetooth adapter. Um, it comes with a little IR remote. I, and it's, got, it's fully ready to go. Like you, you plug it in, and it it has all the benefits of being um, open source hardware without having to build it, which I kind of like. And it's a good price. It's, okay. not, it's not too expensive. It's All a good right. beginner bot. And then last but not least, um, people asked for these because we started stocking one of the Magpie issues. So we have Magpie. 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 We have some Magpie. Do we have some more Magpie? We got a little bit more Magpie. I'd like another Magpie, We got please. Lady Ada on Magpie. Oh, hey, wait. That's me. We got more Magpie. Magpie. And then we have all the Magpies. That was like a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So. Uh, I look the same, I hope. I don't have one look older. Uh, all the pie, all the mag yeah. pie is here. So these are in the, these are printed up in the UK. This supports, uh, the magazine is designed on, on a it's Raspberry Pi. It's designed on a pie. Raspberry Pi. And so we yeah. have these in the US. We're the, the only US distributor. So if you want a piece of history and you want to have great uh, articles and content supported, uh, here's the mag pie. This is the old school gaming issue. Here's one with a robot. Here's one with the camera. So um, it's really cool. I mean, Magpie is it's it's the it's uh, one of the premier magazines for Raspberry Pi enthusiasts. Okay. So okay. Get your Magpie. We were very and popular. That Lady Ada is new products. Good work. That was new products. Good work, me.